don't forget that Raul Jewelers is the proud sponsor of Raging Mouth, the Mike North story. Make sure you visit their website, rahljewelers.com. The three things that I latched on to when I was younger was, uh, you know, newspapers, movies, and music. That was it. That was my escape. The newspapers, I, I read all four newspapers from front to back. I couldn't get anything higher than a D in school, but I could tell everybody anything when it came to entertainment, politics, sports. At a young age, I read the Chicago American in the afternoon, which I delivered also. I read the uh, Daily News in the afternoon. They used to have afternoon papers. So you read the Tribune and the Sun-Times in the morning, and maybe you read the Daily News in the Chicago American in the morning too, but then they had what they called, or Mike Murphy used to call it, the Bulldog Edition, where in the afternoon you read the newspapers. So I read uh, the Tribune, Sun-Times, Chicago American, and the Daily News every day. The people that influenced me, I can still remember. A guy named Cooper Rallo, great sports writer. I was at the college all-star game. From Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois, it's the college all-star football game. This ABC there was a Arch Ward, a guy from the Tribune, fought up back in the 1930s. And who would they would never do this today, and I'd love to see what the score would be. But back in the day, what would happen is the National Football League champions would the next year play the college all-stars, the best players in college. Gale Sayers is playing for the college all-stars. Dick Butkus is playing for the college all-stars. I mean, all these great players, you know, they played in the college all-star games. And there was a hot dog stand in the corner at Soldier Field. And I saw this tall guy there and I walk up to him. And I'm like 19, 18. I go, are you Cooper Rallo? He goes, you know who I am? They were stars to me. John Carmichael lived around Granville and Broadway. Great writer, daily news, legend. Older than he looked because he looked like he imbibed. I used to wait for him at the Grand Villel in the afternoon just to say hi to him because I read him. The same thing goes with Ed Prell, who covered the Bears, Dick Dozer. These guys covered the White Sox and Cubs. The newspapers were big, plus the back of cereal boxes. I don't care if it was Sugar Frosted Flakes, Cocoa Puffs. I mean, I knew what Tony the Tiger did for a living, but it was the back, you know, the Mickey Mantle baseball cards or this or that. So those were, those were my, my influences. And then I got bored for eight hours and went to school. As far as movies, there were no movie channels. So Family Classics with a guy named Frazier Thomas used to come on. Good afternoon. I'm Frazier Thomas, here again to welcome you and act as your host for another Sunday presentation of Family Classics. That's where I got introduced to Errol Flynn. The Adventures of Robin Hood, a fine film with an excellent cast. So you think you're overtaxed, eh? Overtaxed, overworked, and paid off with a knife, a club, or a rope. Why, you speak treason. Fluently. I advise you to curb that wagging tongue of yours. It's a habit I've never formed, Your Grace. Sir Robin of Loxley was a devoted patriot who loved his country and the freedom of all men. He fought Errol Flynn comes out with this book, My Wicked, Wicked Ways. I mean, I, I hate to say it if you know anything about Errol Flynn. He was my idol uh, as, a, as an actor. Underrated, was a party guy. A lot of the stuff that he did appealed to me as a kid. The stuff I read about, I go, wow, he did this. Wow, he did that. And I was heading in that direction, almost like I planned out my life according to his life for a while. And then I got off that merry-go-round. I never, I married to the same woman for 45 years, different than him. I drank a lot like he did, but I didn't do drugs like he did. Irresponsible, didn't care. He was basically like some people call a, a sex pervert. I didn't go to that extreme. He had like two-way portholes, two-way mirrors in his house in Beverly Hills, up in the hills, lived large. All this stuff is in this book, and it just captivated me because I was not much of a reader of books. I read papers, magazines, Time Magazine, People Magazine back then, you know, Jet Magazine, all these magazines. But that's a book I've read a couple times. Oh, she's just a little excited. I know, I know. I'm going to use good judgment. I haven't lost my temper in 40 years. But Pilgrim, you caused a lot of trouble this morning. Might have got somebody killed. And somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. The hell I will. Huge John Wayne fan. Huge. The push in the late 50s and early 60s was Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. I don't know if I speak for the whole city. But let me assure you, most of the middle class, lower class people didn't have fathers that came home, no matter what part of the city. 
and said, let's go see a Marlon Brando movie. It was, let's go see John Wayne, you know, the sons of Katie Elder, the real Conchos, you name any movie. The parents knew it was a safe movie. Parents knew the man wasn't going to get killed. Parents knew he was an icon. My dad had no connection to Marlon Brando. My dad actually acted like sometimes. I mean, yeah, he acted like like John Wayne. For the Western, it was John Wayne, and for the for the entertainment. Some of- kids born with a silver spoon. I guess that I was born a little too soon. Hard knock. Elvis Presley. I went to his movies at the Uptown Theater by myself. Yeah, I took the bus. My love for music is tantamount. I could do a show. They have this thing on, on Sirius Radio, uh, soul music station, that I could do a, a, anything on, on the music of the 60s, 70s, the soul music, the Motown, Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, what a duet they were, the Temptations, the Four Tops, the Funk Brothers, who were the studio band, Barry Gordy. I, I, I interviewed Smokey Robinson, one of the great geniuses of songwriting. Now, if there's a smile, I, it still astounds me. I was sitting at the same table with him. Tom Dreesen, our good friend, did that for us uh, when I did the celebrity golf outing. Uh, to just sit with Smokey Robinson after I listened to his music from Tears of a Clown, I second that emotion in the 60s was just a mind boggling experience for me. It was sitting with, like back in the old, old, olden days, some pianist sitting with Beethoven. I really respect Motown, the Beatles. I remember the, hara- uh, the frenzy for them. And also the Stones, uh, the Beach Boys, love the Beach Boys. I, it, the 60s to me saved my butt, the music of the 60s. Saved my butt because when I was under a lot of stress, I'd be by myself sometimes. And I'd keep playing the same song over and over on the record if it was a good song. I had a problem with that. One time I played the same song, I think it was Seven Rooms of Bloom by the Four Tops about 15 times in a row. Female singers, I'm huge with them. My two favorite stars of all time are Presley and Whitney Houston period. Uh, Cher, Diana Ross, Ronnie Spector, these people I played back then, I went and bought the records. I got lost in it. And and, and I also knew the storylines behind these people, that they came from nothing, that the Stones came from nothing, that Motown came from, most of those kids came from nothing. They're from Detroit. They lived in the neighborhood. You know, Martha Reeves was a secretary and then she became a star. They were just all great, and it, it gave me inspiration because they came from nothing, a lot of these people, that it was possible for me to come from, from where I came from and become something.